Okay, this is the fourth section of chapter one on algorithms, and this is on quicksort. And quicksort is just another way to order a list of numbers or letter into ascending uh, or descending order, or alphabetical or reverse alphabetical order. It works differently to a bubble sort in that we have uh, sort of a number of numbers. Let's say each one of these little blocks here represents a number and what we need to do is to find the middle of that list so let's say there are n numbers in a list add one divide by two that will give us the position of something that we call the pivot position of pivot that's if there's an odd number of numbers in the list if n is odd so we would call this number that's in this position the pivot. Now, if we've got an even number of numbers in our list like this, then what we do is we choose the number that's to the right of the center. OK, so this would be my pivot. So if n is odd, the odd number of numbers in our list, then it's going to be n uh, plus one divided by two. And basically, then we round it up to the next whole number and that gives us the position of the pivot okay so once we've chosen our pivot we're going to have some values uh, which are in the wrong place so let's say i was putting this list in ascending order so i want the smallest values over here up to the largest here so the best way maybe to explain this is with an example of some numbers so let's say i had eight three uh, six four and two so the first thing that I see is that my pivot would be six because that's the number in the middle of the list and then what I want to do if there are any numbers already smaller than six I want to do this in ascending order I keep them where they are so I'm going to keep the three on this side then I want to move across any other numbers which are smaller than six over and they pivot across the six. So they're going to be right here next to the six, but I keep the order the same. So the four and the two are going to pivot across four and two. So notice I've keep their order the same and I keep them towards the six. That three gets like pushed towards the end and the four and the two sort of budging in that gap. So the six there's my pivot now there weren't any numbers on this side that were bigger than eight so there's nothing uh, bigger than six so there's nothing there but the eight needs to move across and that can go that will go right next to the eight now if there were other numbers here bigger than six they would be on this side of the eight so you always keep your numbers the same side um, right or right next to the pivot what this does now is create two new lists either side of the pivot this one and this one OK, so I've already chosen a six as a pivot, so I'm going to highlight that. Then I do the same things again. So the pivot here would be four. And even with a single value on its own like this, it becomes its own pivot. So that's going to be eight. Right. And then I look at this list. And I say, right, OK, does anything need to move across? Well, basically what's going to happen is the two will move over to the left hand side of the pivot um, and that will be i need to know my order of size of numbers almost made a mistake there so the two will move to here the three was already smaller than four so that stays there the two will move there next to the pivot of four and then we have six and eight okay each stage we're highlighting which values we've chosen as pivots once we've chosen a value as of a pivot we don't do anything with it it stays where it is right so now we're left with this now which of those do i pick as the pivot the one to the right of the center so that will be two like right, that now choose chosen as a pivot what do i need to do now well the three is going to pivot across this side because it's bigger than two so now I have two, three, four, six, and eight. 
I'm going to highlight all the values I've chosen as pivots. So the last one to choose as a pivot is the three. It's its own pivot. And obviously it's not moving anywhere. So once all items have been chosen as pivots, we stop. We now know we've got an ordered list. So choose your pivot in the middle. Numbers which are on the correct place on the pivot, you keep them where they are. Any values which are on the wrong side of the pivot, you nudge them across and put them right next to the pivot in the same order. Don't swap their order. OK, so we're going to use the quick sort algorithm on this list. 23, 13, 8, 39, 38. So we need to find a pivot. There are two, four, six, eight, nine values in the list. So the pivot is just like finding the median. Nine plus one divided by two. So the fifth value is going to be the pivot. Uh, let's highlight that. One, two, three, four, five, six, 23. OK, so I'm just going to keep a list of my pivots over here. So my first pivot is 23. So remember what we do now is we are going to move any values smaller than the pivot over to this side, next to the pivot with the other values at the side and any values larger than the pivot, we move over this side next to the pivot and any larger values that are already there, we keep them towards the outside. So things always pivot around the pivot, that sort of makes sense. So that's going to mean that the 13 and the 8 move across. And when the 13 and the 8 move across, they're going to be here next to the 23. The 21 is going to remain on that side. So we've got 21 out on the edge. The 13 and the 8, which have been pivoted across. The 23, which is our pivot. That means we need to pivot across the 24, uh, 42 and 29 next to the pivot here. So 24, 42, 29, and then the 39 and 38 might remain on the outside. So what we've got now are two little sub lists and we need to find the pivot of each of those lists and repeat the algorithm again. So uh, this is going to be my pivot for that list there, that's the middle, and there's the pivot for that one there. OK, so over here, right, the 8 is going to pivot on this side, and the 21 is going to pivot on this side. I'll just keep a, a note of all of the pivots I've used so far. So 23, that hasn't moved anywhere. Then over uh, this side, Right, only none, one number is going to move across, and that's 42, and 42 is going to move here next to its pivot. So we have 24, 29, the 42 moves across, and then we've got 39, 38, and we'll just highlight that this was our pivot. Okay, now that leaves much more sublists. So a sublist can be a single element. So when it's a single element, basically that element becomes a pivot. So I'm just going to continue my list of pivots. So 23 was the first one, and then it was 13, then 29. And then uh, after that, I'm going to choose 8, 21, and 24. They'll just pivot around themselves, and then they're going to move. And 39. Right, so... Um, so chosen as a pivot, so it's that one. So single things in our own become a pivot, then 39. And then we will then pivot these two numbers around the 39. So that means we will have 39 here and then 38, 42. So we've got 8, 13, 21, 23, 24, 29, like this. So all of these values have been chosen as pivots. And that just leaves two little lists here. 
of the 39 and the 42. They're the only two numbers that haven't been chosen as pivots. So there will be the last one we choose as pivot. They pivot it around themselves. 38 and then 42. So since now all of the elements have been chosen as pivots, this list is in order. So you can see this is quicker than a bubble sort. OK, so we want to sort this list into descending order. So when we choose our pivots, we're going to make sure that um, we got diagram might help here. So this is if this is my pivot. Any large values want if they're larger, I move them that way. If they're smaller, I move them that way. And what I'm going to do is just keep a, a note of the pivots. I've chosen as I go through the question. So 37, 20, 17, 26, 44, 41, 27, 28, 50, 17. Right. And then we need to show the working to choose our pivots. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers in the list. So 10 plus 1 divided by 2. 5.5 so that means I need to choose to the right of that the sixth value is going to be my pivot so one two three four five six that's going to be 41 so 41 is my pivot so any values which are already larger than 44 so 41 stay where they are so that's 44 any values on this side which are smaller than 41 also stay where they are so it's going to be 27 28 and 17. all right so anything larger than 41 that needs to pivot across 50 and then we'll have our pivot here of 41. any values um, that are smaller than 41 that need to be pivoted across well that's all of these values 37 20 17 and 26. So here are my two sublists here, which I need to do the pivots for. So my first pivot was 41. Right, so my next two pivots are going to be 50, because that's to the right of the center, and also 26, that's actually dead center. So let's write down. 50 and 26. Okay, so on this side here, uh, effectively what's going to happen is the 44 is going to move over to the other side of the 50. So I'll have 50 and 44. So 50 I've chosen as a pivot. My 41 stays where it is because that's not being pivoted around anything at the moment. Then I look at my second sublist here. Anything that's smaller than 26, I move over to this side. Anything that's larger, I move over to this side. So the 37 is not moving anywhere. So you can write the 37 down. Are there any large values on this side that need to be moved across? Yes, the 27 and the 28. 27, 28. Here's our pivot of 26. Got a value already smaller than 26, so that stays where it is. Um, and then the 20 and 17 pivot across 20, 17. So let's just highlight the pivots that we've used here 26. And then let's like highlight our little sublists. So one is just 44, 37, 27, 28, 20, 17, 17. So my pivots now are going to be 44, 27 and 17. 44, 27 and 17. Okay, well, the 44 just pivots around itself. Then what's going to happen here, the 28 is bigger than 27, so that'll pivot over this side. The 37 remains on that side. Then the 28 moves across to the other side. Then we've got the 26 here. 
and no pivoting needed for the 17 and the 20. So I'll highlight all the values that I've used as pivots already. And the 27, 26 and 17. And that leaves these sub lists here, 27, 28, 20 and 17. So now my next pivots are going to be 28, because that's right of the center, 20 and 17. Well, if it's just a single number, it just pivots around itself, so we can just do those. 28 is going to be a pivot, and that is not going to move. Um, so we have 50, 44, 41, 37, 28, 27, 26, 20, 17, 17. So that just leaves the 37, which hasn't been chosen as a pivot. So I'll just write down the next pivot is going to be 37. Like that. And then I think that's every single value. So let's just highlight everything that we've chosen as a pivot so far. Then that's just going to leave the 37 to pivot around itself, which means now it's chosen as a pivot. So now, since every number has been chosen as a pivot, this is now in descending order. So we'll just write down since every number has been chosen as a pivot, every number has been chosen as a pivot. A pivot. The final list is 50, 44, 41, 37, 28, 27, 26, 20, 17, 17. We're done. Okay, you should now be able to do exercise 1D of pages 15 and 16 of the book. The um, quick sort algorithm is listed here. Uh, just a couple of notes maybe in this recap. that If we've got an even number of items in the list, even number of, and it's probably going to be numbers, let's put items. Then the pivot is to the right of the center. The pivot is to the right of the center. Watch out for questions where you have uh, descending, because we're so used to doing ascending lists from smallest to largest. Watch out for, for lists that go from largest to smallest. And remember, to um, identify clearly your pivots. So that might be actually listing what the pivots are. It may be using circles and uh, blocks. Avoid highlighting because if you use a highlighter on an exam paper, uh, more than likely it will just come out black and you won't be able to see it. But make sure that it's clear which um, values you've chosen as pivots.